What religious doctrine or belief is it that you feel compels you not to do this? Well, the Christian faith, you know, God's word states that a marriage is between one man and one woman. That, you know, and, and, and that's what rules my faith, you know. Now, you've heard your critics. They say, and we covered it in the piece, your critics say you two are a sinner, that you were married four times, twice to the same man, but divorced three times, that you had uh, an affair while married, that you had children out of wedlock, and they look at you and say, who are you to judge others? To them you say what? I have not judged anybody. I have uh, given my life to Christ. I have been redeemed by the blood of Christ. And that's available to anybody that wants that. My sins are forgiven. They are thrown into a sea of forgetfulness from the time I gave my life to Him. Do I, do I still sin? Maybe ever now and then. You know, we're all flesh. We tend to say things maybe we don't, um, maybe say things that we shouldn't say or, or, you know, act in a way that's unbecoming, get angry, you know, without cause. But that's what repentance is all about. You know, you ask God to forgive you and you, and you, and you vow not to do it anymore, you know. But we are flesh. To say that I'm a sinner, you know, I guess that's somebody judging me. What about the, the, the couple with whom you had the confrontation? They said, we felt humiliated. We felt like second-class citizens. Can you understand that, that point of view? I, when they first came in, they demanded that, that I talk to them. Nothing would do them, and they had cameras going and everything. And uh, so when I was talking to them, they wanted to know why I would not issue them the marriage license. And I simply told them about when God created earth. He spoke everything into existence. They said they went to get their marriage license pursuant to the law, and they didn't want a, quote, lecture in religion. They wanted to know the reason why I wouldn't issue one, and I gave them the reason. Mm -hmm. Do you think, you know, the, the argument on the other side is, well, if we're going to give a religious accommodation to someone like Kim Davis, then we're going to have to give a religious accommodation to an untold number of people, to Catholics who don't want to issue a license to somebody who's been divorced but was married in a Catholic church and didn't get it annulled, to a Muslim clerk who doesn't want to sanction the, the, the marriage of a Christian to a Muslim and so on. Can you understand that argument? Well, <clears throat> I could if I thought it was a valid argument because for simply the fact is that marriage is defined as one man and one woman. Um, it's not like black and white. You're not talking about a racial issue. You're not talking about... Um, I'm just talking about marriage in general. But other, as, but other people in other religions have their own definitions of marriage and their own beliefs on who can and cannot marry. So the critics say this is a slippery slope if we're going to bend the law or the rules for one person with one set of objections, then we're going to have to do it for a bunch of people with other So objections. you have millions of Christians who object this whole same-sex marriage issue. Are their rights invalid? Are their rights not worth anything? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a valid point and it's a fight that's worth fighting for. How about that? Because, you know, the president, even today, was talking about how in this country we stand for religious liberty. Do you believe that? Do you believe that still in the United States of America today? In 2015, when a, when a county clerk can go to jail because she is upholding her religious beliefs, I would have to question his statement. So you decide you're going to stand by a stand on principle. You wind up getting word you're going to jail mm -hmm. even though you knew it was a possibility describe the moment you learned you were going there was a flood of emotions of course but when the marshals came around to get me I stood up and I thanked Judge Bunning and I walked out with grace not knowing how long you were going to be in jail for didn't matter how long I was going to be in jail how long were you willing to stay as long as it took I would stay till January until legislation was put in, if that was what it took. You could have been there for up to, up to a year. Sure. Did you know that? It didn't matter. Megan, I, 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 when, when I gave my life to the Lord, I vowed to Him. With my, I, I vowed to serve Him with my whole heart, mind, body, and soul, every, every bit of strength I had. And to me, that's a vow I want to keep because it's a heaven or hell issue for me. 
even while you're sitting in a jail cell alone. Yes, ma'am, I counted the joy. You know what I did while I was in there? I sang praises to him to the top of my lungs. They probably thought I was insane in there. Were you allowed to talk to anybody? Um, I was by myself, so I talked to the Lord. Was it humbling? Yeah. I mean, somebody can see you at all times. There's no privacy. You know, you're a county clerk. You're an elected official of, the, of your county. And you the know next how thing many you know, thumbs you're sitting up I there. got? In the jail. People in the jail, hardened criminals, in there for over 10 years, got message, said, let her know we're praying for her. Did you know at the time that it had exploded into such a national story? No, I mean, I just, I never even imagined, you know, somebody like me for just standing up, you know, any Christian just standing up for your beliefs would, would lead to, to this. So you get out after six days and there's an agreement now that the deputy clerks can issue the licenses that you don't want your name on it. You don't want to be sanctioning it, but the, if the deputy clerks can do it, okay, that's a different story. We saw that moment. When you came, there it is, when you came out of the jail, and they, there's Governor Huckabee, Ted Cruz was there as well, Matt, you're there, Aya, the Tigers playing, you received this huge heroine's welcome. Describe that moment. What was that like for you?